Hey, welcome to Loose Change. Some assembly required. Well, maybe more possibly. We'll work with it. I'm Jim Evans. Thanks for joining us. We've got some show for you. Really looking forward to uh, sitting down with the guests we have coming up, so you want to hang around for that. We start with an alert. There will be lines for BP and not to get gas. Bo Pelini is the new head football coach at Youngstown State. Yep. According to reports, is taping of this show. It's a done deal. Bo is coming home to coach the Penguins. That's just tremendous, exciting. You know what, Greg? Tickets are going to go faster than a truckload of jelly donuts at Honey Boo Boo's house for this. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, I mean, not that exciting for the Cleveland Browns. Whew. After such a promising start, leading the division, they were at 7-4, and four, it all fell apart. They benched Brian Hoyer, who got them there, to a winning record. And then Johnny Manziel's debut. Yeah. That went up in flames worse than the Cuyahoga River and Mayor Ralph Perk's hair combined. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if it matters who the quarterback is, you know? And um, they're trying to be proactive. Apparently, Coach Patton is going to get the whole offense together, and they're going to watch the movie Saw 6, because recently they haven't seen 6 too much, have they? <laughs> I don't know if that'll work. Probably not. What else? Uh, I was watching the Philadelphia Eagles play recently, and on defense they ran a cover zero. Cover zero. You don't see that much. Certainly I haven't. The closest I've come to that, I was in Letonia at the Eagles. They had no cover to get in there, so... <laughs> Do they even have a, an Eagles in Letonia? <laughs> you may have heard about this uh, former baseball player, Jose Canseco, not long ago, accidentally shot himself in the hand and shot his finger off. That's a real change for him because recently he's been getting in trouble for shooting his mouth off. <laughs> Hang in there, Jose. And how about the start for the uh, uh, Mahoning Valley Racino, Hollywood gaming thing? Off to such a, a tremendous start. People having a lot of fun, winning big. Now they have horse racing, and that's really exciting. It's, I think it's really cool, although I got to admit, uh, I have to give those jockeys credit. That's a tough thing to do. It's dangerous. I, I couldn't do it. I was thinking about that. You know, if, if I want to find myself going around in circles, following real big horse rear ends, I'll just follow the Kardashians. <laughs> it might be a lot safe. Well, maybe it won't be safe. Hey, we're not horsing around. We've got a great show, as I mentioned. The great Vince Camp joins us next, right here on Loose Change. Here you go. When your product isn't as good as cable, you hire an expensive law firm. When you hire an expensive law firm, they write small print. Smaller. When people don't read the small print, they sign up for a product that is not as good as cable. When they discover that they signed up for a product that is not as good as cable, they read the small print. When they read the small print, they lose consciousness. Don't lose consciousness. Stick with Armstrong and never be surprised by the dishes small print. Armstrong. One wire. Infinite possibilities. Welcome back to Loose Change. I wasn't kidding, was I? I said we had a very, very special guest. The great Vince Camp joins us now, local radio legend, Vince Camp, and uh, I can't thank you enough, my friend, for, for taking the time to, to join us. And, uh, oh, Jim, it's as, always a pleasure. As, as we like to do the top of the program with our guests, uh, give us a little background of where you're from and where you went to school and that type of thing in the community. Well, I'm from, uh, originally from Camel, and I still live there. For a few years I was uh, in Farrell, but for the most part I've uh, been a, a Camelite uh, most of my life. And, good place uh, to live. Good place to live, oh yes. Yeah, and I went to Camel Memorial High School. And uh, from there, then of course, the Career Academy of Broadcasting after Ooh. school was over. Yes, that and uh, the uh, uh, outfit down in Fredericksburg, Virginia, at the time when you used to be able to go out and get uh, the first class license. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, REI, the Radio Engineering Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some of the things, you know, some of the background. That led to uh, WFAR in Farrell, mm -hmm. where I spent some time and some good years there. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, with the program director, it was Al Zippe, great gentleman. He gave me a lot of encouragement. Mm -hmm. And then uh, came uh, my big break in 1975 when I went to uh, WBBW. Sure. 
and I came about this close to not getting uh, that job because I didn't want it. I turned it down. I was actually offered it at uh, uh, a dinner with the late uh, Father Ayati, mm -hmm. and it uh, happened to be that night where a couple of gentlemen who had uh, quite a background in uh, Radio 2, Al Parker or Alex Pascarella. Okay. Alex mm -hmm. Pascarella was there, and so was uh, Tony Agnesi, who at the time was known as Nick Anthony, and he was doing a show at WBBW called uh, The uh, Small Talk, which later became The Electric Magazine. So uh, out of the blue, they asked me if I wanted to take a job with them, and I said uh, no, because I'd pretty much reached the point I was spinning my wheels at uh, the other station there, and I said, uh, you know, it's time maybe for me to get out and try something else. And a friend of mine was going to get me a job as a dispatcher for a while, uh, working uh, with a trucking firm that later on would go defunct within a year, especially oh. after the yeah. the downfall of the steel mills right, in right. Youngstown. Yeah. Uh, so I agreed. I said, all right. He said, send me a, an audition tape. That sounds like old technology yeah, right, today. Right, yeah. Send me an audition tape. And before you know it, they called me, and uh, I started doing Tradio. At the, remember, I don't know if you remember, remember Tradio. That, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. Tradio. Uh, and that was an experience, uh, uh, Tradio. And then uh, came the Electric Magazine, because Nick had uh, left for another job down in uh, Atlanta. And I uh, was doing that for a while, and then all of a sudden, they decided that they wanted to try me on the party line. And that was probably the high watermark of my career. And uh, a lady by the name of Helen Blasco. Mm -hmm. She was the program director at the yes. time. Mm -hmm. It was her idea. Mm -hmm. She was the one that uh, got the whole thing going. And I was there for 19 years doing the party yeah, line yeah, show. And uh, I had some great moments there following Dan Ryan. Of course, that didn't hurt the ratings any uh, to be able to follow someone like him. But uh, again, we worked with a lot of great uh, folks in those days. Sure. Some of them are gone now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, most recently, unfortunately, Johnny K. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. worked uh, with him and Dick, DT, Dick Thompson, sure. and mm -hmm. uh, remember Boots Bell. Yep. Uh, some of the when radio was radio. Some uh, great names here. Yes, when radio was radio, mm -hmm. uh, it was it was a great time. It really yes. was. The golden age, perhaps. The, the golden say, age. I, guess. Uh, I would call it golden Maybe. age. Maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, then along the way, I got to meet people like Don Gardner. I remember, mm -hmm. you know, other gentlemen uh, like that that, uh, uh, you know, you admired as a, as a youngster. Sure. Yeah, I did and well. uh, people that kind of influenced you to want to get into the business at that time. And uh, then I got to meet some other uh, gentlemen along the way that also were quite interesting. My very first major league ball player, because I'm a big baseball fan, yeah, as you know. We'll, we'll get to that. It was a, a, a Pittsburgh Pirate by the name of Elroy Face, the Baron of the Bullpen. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, I met him at uh, WFAR in Farrell. He was the very first major leaguer I ever met. And uh, from there, I would beat uh, a few others along the way, sure, too. Sure, no doubt. Uh, including some pretty great announcers, too. Absolutely. Yeah. What was it the, about... Or when did you know, hey, I want to get into broadcast, I want to be a radio announcer? What, what pulled you to that? Actually, it was a friend of mine who, unfortunately, now is gone. He uh, told me one evening as we were sitting around wondering what are we going to do with our lives. And he... Still doing that now. So. And still doing it to some degree. <laughs> we're still doing that. But he, he said, you know what, I think you do very good in broadcasting. I said, what? Yeah. And he said, yeah, really, you know, got the consider it, yeah. you know, think about it. And I said, well, I him hot around, and then finally it came to fruition. I started in 1967. So this uh, coming February, Lord willing, it'll be uh, 48 years wow. that I've been uh, in and out, uh, mostly as a full-timer, mm -hmm. but that kind of came to an end in 2009 with the mm -hmm. things that have happened in the broadcasting sure. business since then. Mm -hmm. Uh, downsizing and everything else right. led uh, to uh, me looking elsewhere, but I still was retained uh, to do the Italian program, which I which still thing. do to this mm -hmm. day, and yep. I've enjoyed it very, very much. Enjoy it uh, not only for the Italian community, but a lot of uh, non-Italians who enjoy it. I think uh, that's e even uh, as gratifying sure. uh, to know that they, they do like the music, and we can continue it for hopefully a, a few more years, uh, God willing. You know. Well, Yes, hopefully, and, hopefully. I, and mm -hmm. I, I think you'll be able to do that. And it's still great to you know have you uh, 
have you on the air and, and hear your voice. And, and um, for those who may not know, give us a brief description of what Tradio was all about. Tradio was uh, buying, selling, tra uh, trading, giving away. Uh, there were a few restrictions, at least uh, what we had there. Uh, you couldn't sell automobiles, but you could sell tires. You couldn't sell mattresses, because I think there was a, a state law at that time. And you couldn't sell canned goods that you made yourself. Other than that, uh, anything goes. And uh, it was very, very popular. But for some reason, it started to uh, decline a little bit. And then when we were sold, this outfit that came in at that time, uh, again, unfortunately, when the local element was lost, so many other things were lost too. And uh, they didn't think it was a, a viable program anymore, so they took that off. And uh, then uh, gradually it led to other things being taken off too. But uh, uh, we had a good run for a long time. But it was buying, selling. People would call in and say, I've got, uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, baby clothes I want to mm -hmm. get rid of. Uh, there, I've got uh, tires I want to uh, dispense of. Things like that. that uh, everyday items. Yeah, fun uh, doing I have that? an old mixer that uh, I want to get rid of. Or I'm looking. I'm looking to buy and that, you had fun doing that? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, we would write it down. We'd get as many as uh, sometimes 70, 75 mm -hmm. calls, uh, all different ones that uh, bad. people would call in those days. Yes. And, and the, the, the show after that was uh, the uh, talk, talk line? Uh, uh, after that, after uh, that, was... yeah, that usually followed the, the party line show. The party line, party yeah. line. First was the Dan Ryan. Then you, were do, you did the party line then show. Then the party line show was done by someone else. Uh, at that time, and I, I did radio when I first arrived. Right. Then after that, then I ended up doing the Electric Magazine in the afternoon. Okay. And then there was a sports show at night with uh, Jim Marzano. Jim Marzano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, then uh, eventually I, I started doing the Party Line show. Okay. That's, that's the one where I stayed. Uh, tell us what that was about. That's what I was getting. Now that uh, the Party Line was special. Uh, I, I thank all those wonderful people, especially the ladies. And some men, too, who would really get into it. Mm -hmm. uh, they would call and give their recipes, uh, the uh, household hints, but mostly recipes. Okay. Recipes that are still talked about uh, today, Jim. Yeah. And I run into some of the children now of uh, the, uh, their moms. Uh, most of them have passed wow. away, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But uh, the show is still remembered fondly. So I used to remember the morning when mom would be listening to the Party Line show. And they would listen, too. And they picked up a lot of... Uh, uh, important hints that helped them later on. Right. And uh, it was just a, a camaraderie uh, that was very, very special. And uh, we realize now years later how much that program meant to, to so many people. I, I really enjoyed uh, doing it, uh, even to the point where recently one of our number one listeners and participants, her name was Ida, when she passed away, I was honored that her daughter would ask me to be one of the pallbearers. Wow. That uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, was, it was very, very special. It was. And, uh, my, my wife Donna used to listen to it uh, at that time, too. And uh, years later, of course, we got married. But, uh, you know, there were many, many people that uh, the show touched. And we even introduced a, a garden program. On Fridays, we used to do a garden program uh, with the participation from the Men's Garden Club of Youngstown. Uh, they were always just fiercely devoted to coming uh, on the show. And they would come in all kind of weather. It wouldn't matter what it was. I said, no way those guys are going to make it today. They'd be there. They'd find a way to be there. Originally, it started off with uh, Larry Tooker, who was involved with uh, uh, Mill Creek Park and also the late uh, Mrs. Parm, uh, Bertie Parm. Uh, but uh, that was a part of the show, too. And then along the way, whenever we could get somebody that was specialized in uh, something, we would have them as a guest. Okay. One day, we even had uh, the late Congressman uh, Trafficant oh, really? join us. It mm -hmm. was, uh, was cool. uh, an interesting show. And he was quite the cook. And he brought uh, some recipes with him. Mm -hmm. So he was also a part of our show. And nice. then we had people that uh, were from other parts of the country, including uh, another great, uh, Mr. Food. 
Oh. Mr. Food was yeah, also uh, a part of our show uh, on a couple of occasions. Then you're making me hungry. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to go out and well, break off and eat. See, the, the wonderful part of it, Jim, was that the, 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 the show, uh, I had the, the blessing of living in an area like this where we have yeah. all this ethnic background. Yes. Italian, German, oh, wow. Polish, uh, everything, Irish. Irish. We had everything, right. Right. And, uh, it, and it showed. Uh, mm -hmm. They weren't afraid to call in and uh, express their views and give these recipes. It would take a little time once in a while, and I would try to go a little slower because I realized, uh, and I know now, you know, people have carpal tunnel and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, some right. uh, other little problems, mm -hmm. arthritis and things. Uh, so we uh, tried to go uh, give them extra time. And if I had to, I would call them later on. Uh, if they left their number and they missed an ingredient or two, I'd be glad to give them a call and, uh, nice. and make sure that they got it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the least I could do. Because many times they were there waiting for yeah. an hour and a half wow. before they could get on. And, uh, and I felt bad, but that was the, the way the you show was. Out. You just uh, had to play it out. Right. Yeah. Well, we're cooking right now, but we have to take a break. So, all right. So, so hang around. You can hang with us, right? Sure. Vince Camp. I'm Jim Evans. We'll be right back here on Loose Shake. Turn your whole home on to high-definition programming. With Armstrong's HD Digital Adapter, it's easier and more affordable than ever. The HD TV in the kitchen finally get high-definition picture and sound. The HD TV in the family room add all your favorite high-def channels at a price you can afford. Our HD DA now features an on-screen guide. To order your HD Digital Adapters, visit armstrongonewire.com slash turn it on. Armstrong, one wire, infinite possibilities. Welcome back to Loose Change. I'm Sam Evans, along with local broadcasting legend Vince Camp. Legend. And I sincerely <laughs> mean that. So, um, what makes a good? Thank you, Jim. You know what? I have to say, I, I enjoyed those days that we had together yes. uh, at uh, Clear Channel doing on Friday football. nights yep. doing football. Yep. Uh, when I you did, did football, well. and I was on the other end, many times you had me in stitches uh, with uh, a lot of your little. Quotes and quips, and uh, I enjoyed I working uh, with you immensely. And uh, of course, with the uh, Champ Summers yep. and mm -hmm. uh, the late Larry Nicholas, and, uh, oh, yeah. and of course, Denny. Denny. Yeah. yeah. Denny Liebert, he's one of the best. So. Absolutely. Right, yeah. right at so the top. I, I had to mention that. Great experience for me as well. So, this mm -hmm. is not having you involved in that, but uh, still great to see you, see you there doing your show. Um, and filling in with you guys yeah, every once yeah, in a while do. on we'll, a we'll Sunday morning do that on, on, on WKBN. On uh, uh, enjoy that too. Oh well, yes, with all the guys that uh, we get to see different yeah. people, and or whether we're just talking in the the, the hallway oh, there having yeah. a coffee. Yeah, it's and all good. to me too. It's all good. What makes a good broadcaster? What makes a good radio announcer in your mind? Uh, communication with the, with people. I think that's the the, the main thing. Uh, you got to go out of your way a little bit. How so? And it doesn't mean uh, uh, going to extremes. It's just uh, an acknowledgement of people that uh, come up to you and uh, you know they, they give you encouragement and help you along the way. Uh, I think that's that, that's something that's very very important. Well, and that plus uh, you know you you got to work at it like anything else. Sure. Uh, surely, uh, you're cutting a commercial. You got to give it your best effort. Uh, the inflection and all the things that go into it. Uh, the, that's just part of the things I think that come with it's time. It's a skill, sure. It's a skill mm -hmm. and it's honed over the years. Uh, it doesn't happen just uh, overnight, nope. you know. And as the years go by, uh, you know, the, you get more and more seasoned. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, uh, communicating, I think, with your audience which a lot of people don't get to do that mm -hmm. much of today because uh, everything is cards and things, right. uh, uh, cue cards and things like that. Uh, a certain element has been lost, I think, in broadcasting uh, that connection with the, uh, with the crowd, with, with, with the audience, uh, which certainly existed when I w first got sure. into the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's important to be... And way before that. It, 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 yeah, certainly. It's important to be local, isn't it? Uh, oh, local's everything. I, I didn't think of it that way when I first got in. Right. But uh, local is everything. Uh, it, it really is. Uh, unfortunately, it's not like it used to be either uh, as far as local is concerned. But still, 
whatever is still there, we want to try to preserve it uh, and hopefully build on it. But uh, local is the way to go. Well, you're, and you're um, certainly show on Clear Channel when, uh, when you had the weekly uh, show and now, now your, your Italian show. It certainly has that flavor, and that's what makes it so good. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and again, with the program, uh, if someone, anyone sends me anything, I always want to make sure that we put it on, whether it's a spaghetti dinner, a steak fry, a pork roast. It doesn't matter. We're always glad to be able to reach out to the community any way we can. Answer phones, of course, which is important. Uh, but um, if someone sends us any kind of correspondence, we mm -hmm. always want to make sure that we respond. You've kind of, you know, intimated about how the industry has changed and everything changes and uh, cer sure. certainly broadcasting yes. has. Mm -hmm. and, and there's, you and I can sit and talk about how it's not changed for the better. Some, some ways it has perhaps, in other ways not so. With technology, but, some of it has yes. been really great. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's been talk recently that uh, there's a possibility that radio may eventually end up going away. Do you, do you think that'll happen? And I don't think it's. I don't think it will completely, and I don't think it's a good thing that if it were to happen. If it were to happen, I think it would be a tragedy. Yes. It really, really would be a tragedy. Uh, I hope that never happens, Jim. Could it be that one day robots are going to be doing everything? There's so much automation now. Probably not, yeah. Uh, but I, I hope not, because once that's gone, that local element, uh, that, that's that's bad. Well, you know, to me, it's, it's as long as we're still driving cars around, there has to be right. some form of yeah. over-the-air broadcasting. And, uh, some of the major companies, auto uh, makers, are not going to have uh, uh, AM and FM uh, radios in the cars by night, uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. And again, that's a rumor. But why in the world would they do that? Yeah. Not everybody can afford XM right, right, and right. Uh, all the rest of this business. Satellites. And, uh, you, you, I would think, at least There's as no long as we're it. around, radio will be too. It survived almost every, you know, at one point television was supposed to destroy radio. And it, it never didn't. happened. Right, you're right. It, it never happened. Uh, and it saw some of its greatest days. And it can again. Uh, everything old is new again, as they say. I, I really believe there's still a lot of life left uh, in radio. I hope so. You mentioned uh, early on in your career you had the opportunity to uh, get to know, meet, get to know Elroy Face. And any other special moments along the way in your career that, that kind yes. of still stick out in your mind? Uh, yeah, oh, definitely, Jim. Uh, uh, one of the things I always wanted to do was meet Bob Prince. <laughs> and uh, The Gunner, right? The Gunner. The Gunner. The Gunner. Uh, Iron City Beer. <laughs> of course, the former... Pittsburgh Pirates, play-by-play uh, -play announcer. Play, former, uh, 28 years, the Pirates announcer. Here I am, an Indian fan, and yet uh, uh, my three favorites, probably there's a, a three-way tie between Tom Hamilton, mm -hmm. which, outstanding, yes, and uh, Jimmy Dudley, I remember the him. late Jimmy just, Dudley. Uh, I, I thought bit, he yeah. was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I got to be two out of the three. I never met Jimmy Dudley, but I did meet uh, Bob Prince, and it was all uh, made possible by... Uh, one of our fellow workers, uh, Mr. Buzz Aldemus. Oh, gee. Buzz, whiz. yeah, great gentleman. Yes, very much so. And he says, I got a surprise for you. So we end up going to the VIP in February of 1983. Hmm. Never forget it. And that night, there were all kinds of stars all over the place. I Tom, remember they used Tommy, to have those things there. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tommy Lasorda was there. Mm -hmm. uh, Toby Hara was there. The late Chuck Tanner, God rest his soul. A uh, great gentleman that he was. Yeah. And, and there was, uh, oh, I, I can't even remember at the moment, but the, there were stars sure. all over the place. And uh, when he introduced me to Bob Prince, I, I was really so uh, happy. We took a picture together. Uh, we took a picture together. It didn't come out really good. He looks good. I don't. <laughs> I'm over there like with my mouth twisted. Uh, 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 the way that, that it was taken, we didn't have a chance to get settled in. But I'm still glad to have it regardless uh, so I got to finally meet the gunner. He looked a little on the weak side because I think already he was starting to get sick. But uh, he still had a lot of spirit, and uh, we got to talk for a little bit. I got to dine with uh, Bob Feller, and Joe Charbonneau, uh, also at the VIP right. uh, back in, the, in those days, and uh, got to meet Bud Cat Grant and mm -hmm. uh, many. Gene Woodling, there's another gentleman 
Gene Woodling, who was uh, an Ohioan, yeah, and uh, forgotten some. That's great stuff. He was a fine hitter, uh, and, and many oh, so many more along the way. Uh, right. Gaylord Perry, uh, yeah. and some of them came to the radio. Well, big station. names, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we only have a couple of moments left, unfortunately, but I know you are an immense Cleveland Indians fan, and. Uh, oh, yes. Do you think you're going to see that? That's my misfortune, that, that, and that, some of the others too. We've been waiting. The championship uh, in, in the near future. In I time. hope so, Jim. That's the one goal I've always had. I said before I depart, I want to see them win just one. Yeah. Well, you still got a lot of time left. So yeah, well, that. hopefully uh, <laughs> we still have a lot of time left. But I, I like to see them uh, at least win that once. They, they came so close, 95. 97, who will ever forget that? I'd like to, but uh, and then in 2007, <laughs> I just got a feeling right. that yeah. if we would have got past Boston, we would have taken the Colorado Rockies. It, it quickly, be, well, just one brief thought. Do you think they're doing the, the, the things, the right things to put them in position to achieve that as we wrap it up? I think they're starting to do that. Uh, at times, it looks like they haven't. Uh, certainly, they can't compete mm -hmm. money-wise for the big free agents. They have to do it through the farm system, yeah. and the farm system was a big disappointment for a good mm -hmm. 10 years now. Yeah. Uh, it's really been a dud. Now I think the last couple of drafts have looked a, a lot better, and uh, it's uh, starting to shape up a bit. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it's our, not a good deal that we're out of time here, but uh, I can't thank you enough for, Jim, for being on, on the program. No, it's great to see you, as friend. always. Vince Camp, everyone. I'm so we'll, honored. Thank we'll you. We'll be uh, back to wrap it up here on Loose Change. That didn't take long. Just a loose connection. Easy fix. If there's nothing else, I'll be on my way. So, what about the bill? No charge, Mr. Anderson. Armstrong doesn't charge for most routine service calls. Wait, what do you mean, no charge? As in Zippo? Zip. Zilch. Zero. Nada. Nothing. Nil. No, no charge. charge. No charge for most routine service calls. Armstrong. One wire. Infinite possibilities. Welcome back, and as we close out, Vince has a very special announcement to help us do that. Yes, Jim. Uh, any rebroadcast or other use of this program without the express written consent of... Uh, you still think anyone would really want to do that? Come on. What does he bad? Does he bad? He's right. That's going to do it for our show. Thanks so much to Greg Roden, as always, and to the great Vince Camp. I'm Jim Evans. We'll see you next time on Loose Change. Can I come over? Armstrong Local Programming features our community like no one else. Meet your friends and neighbors at special events. Find the perfect pet. Celebrate our region's rich history or enjoy our natural wonders. Armstrong Local Programming is available online, on demand, and on your local Armstrong channel. Find the complete program schedule at armstrongonewire.com. Local programming, exclusively from Armstrong. One Wire, infinite possibilities. Watch TV everywhere with Armstrong. Now you can download apps from your favorite networks directly to your tablet or smartphone. Use your Armstrong password to verify. Sign in once and start watching. You'll have access to full-length episodes, special features, and much more. Use your apps anywhere, in your home or on the go. It's so convenient. TV everywhere from Armstrong. One wire, infinite possibilities.